Our event is entitled uh, Get Inspired, Make It Happen. Uh, what are your top tips for educators to make it happen? So the most important thing is to be open and interactive. So uh, if you engage in, uh, in a very interactive and, and uh, a joyful conversation, uh, I think you can make it happen. Uh, the next one is to, to be interested uh, in uh, what people say, in uh, learning new, new methodologies and new ideas. Um, and uh, the third uh, would be to let yourself get inspired as well. The first tip would be uh, something we talked about uh, today and during the, the program. That's about uh, handing the, the power and the control of the teaching session and the learning session to the participant. Letting the participant sit on the driver's seat. It's a first tip that would allow participant to get inspired and to participate much more. So this is the first uh, lesson we learned in uh, UCOP. I think the first one would be only do it if you believe it. Because I think it really comes through when people do not believe of what they're doing. So it is important that they find in whatever project they take on, they find what is it really that connects them. Uh, to, to that project that they're taking over. The second would be how do you engage your community, understanding who is going to impact and which role do you really expect from those people. And, in, and I'm talking people, normally when we talk about educators, they are talking about schools or, or you know, formal institutions. So you not only need to think of the people that are above you that, oh, I need to convince the principal or this other boss or whatever, but also like, how is this impacting my other colleagues? How is this impacting the people that, that are staff? It may be like the secretaries or, or the cleaning people or whatever. So also know how is it going to impact in the, um, in, in the, in the rest of the stakeholders in, in your community. And then the third one would be inspire um, the people that are going to use that experience, right? In this case, when we talk about um, creating projects in school, we tend to think about creating projects for students, but it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. It can be for parents, it can be for bus drivers, it can be for anyone. So how do you get these people inspired and engage on the creation of the project itself and not like something that you dump into them? Because it may create that friction of, oh, you know, one more idea that one more person thought of and now I need to change my life just because someone had this idea. So it's like, how can we collectively engage in dialogues that, you know, support your idea from the very beginning, have an impact in the community and how do you expect them to react? And then how do you believe that this is going to support you and the people you, you have around? Our event was entitled uh, Get Inspired, Make It Happen. Uh, how do you think educators can actually uh, make it happen and why do you think they would get inspired by our work? Our intention has always been to give tools to the educators. Uh, to, gi to give them inspiration but by giving them knowledge and giving them knowledge about other things that other educators are doing. So engaging, networking, relations. Because many years ago, from a very wise woman, actually an educator, she told me, never, never try to teach a teacher how to teach. So it's, it's like that. I think that in many educative systems, uh, teachers are struggling, are fighting, are very committed. Um, sometimes what they need are tools. They need tools that, unfortunately, due to sometimes resources, due to sometimes lack of innovative uh, initiatives, they don't get from the system. And I think that we should definitely, definitely uh, try to contribute to that. We have very good teachers, we have committed teachers, we have people that are, have been, especially during these times, struggling with COVID, struggling using their own resources, right? I mean, in, in terms of technology, trying to keep uh, their students on track. And they've been very heroic doing that. So anything that we can have for making them their job easier and anything that we can give them as a tool and then they are going to use it whatever they want. I mean, that's, that's the inspiration that I, that I found also 
that the moment that they were together, they were starting to share and to and to, to yeah, well, sharing. That's the that's the thing and collaborating. So that's what uh, they get inspired by other teachers. Well, I, I think that we've produced a really great set of uh, valuable tools and resources. And so I hope that educators, um, I'm more focused on the um, university level, but also secondary education um, teachers and educators. I really hope that they can learn um, some specific ways to bring this content into their local context, into universities, into their schools. Because, um, you know, what we really saw coming out of this project and with uh, the additional training experience that we now are running in, um, in Trento, well, online, but with the University of Trento and the University of Bolzano and the University of Palermo of Co-op Mindset, we see that the tools that were developed in the U Co-op project between the MOOC and the, the Guide for Educators and the workshops that we did um, really are applicable. They, they really are usable. So what happened in this project was that um, the participants in the Italian workshop took what they were doing in the workshop and implemented it into their universities. And so it's just an absolute wonderful outcome. It's 100% proof that these tools and resources are usable, accessible, and replicable. So it's a really exciting outcome of the project. Well, I think that educators can get inspired because of a different way of uh, seeing entrepreneurship education. One that is more uh, participative, democratic, uh, social, and that are all uh, issues that I think that matter a lot to young students. So uh, they are um, also tools and ways to get people involved uh, into the learning processes. How important is uh, cooperative entrepreneurship for young Europeans in your opinion? Well, uh, I think it's uh, really important to, to raise awareness around uh, social economy and social cooper cooperativism, especially amongst young people. Uh, uh, as we can see with the pandemic and the, the climate change, uh, all these social issues also connected to SDGs uh, are uh, really important and um, we need to work uh, towards them using social economy uh, as a vehicle and uh, that's up to young people and that's up to us to, to educate young people uh, in order for them to, to have a, a really important impact uh, on these issues uh, and to, to use um, uh, the new developed skills uh, into um, jobs and uh, having uh, social impact. I believe that the Europeans are quite cooperative to start with, you know, because when we talk about Europe, we are talking about very different realities to begin with that decide to collectively tackle challenges of the world and that decide to belong to a community that is like a madhouse in a way because there's so many differences, there's so many challenges and they're not only phasing out, we're phasing in when trying to solve those problems. So it's like a big, big size cooperative where, you know, there is a small cooperatives in every country and then they decide to come together to create a bigger cooperative that is going to face the world. So I think that that feeling and that understanding of what collective means and what social impact means and what social well-being means, it's much more developed than in a lot of other regions worldwide. So I think that we have a good ground. Now, when we talk about entrepreneurship, it's not necessarily a European feature, right? So people in Europe uh, or in the world, when you ask about entrepreneurs, they tend to think America, right? It's, it's a fact. Um, but yet we have a lot of projects that go below the rubber that are in entrepreneurship because they are more social, because the aim is not to become that superstar entrepreneur that the reality has portrayed as what a successful entrepreneur is. And yet we have a lot, a very, very rich um, network of businesses that are privately owned and all those people are bakers, the shoemakers, the schools, 
Um, all of those things are actually private and means someone decided to take on the challenge to make it an entrepreneurship project. So I think that it is in our features that the cooperative uh, part of it is very natural to Europeans. And I think that, you know, unfortunately, it's not necessarily super well known. But I think that when we target people in their youth age um, that are going to grow with challenges that affect all of us, like climate change, like, you know, pursuing the SG, uh, SDG policies and everything, um, they're going to turn to entrepreneurship and social forms of businesses as the way to go because they are going to believe that collectively we do better. And I think that this is something that is going to happen. So I think it's very important. Cooperative entrepreneurship, I think it will become um, so, so important for the future of, of young Europeans and young Europe. And um, it's a real challenge to see how we can um, get more young people involved in, in cooperative entrepreneurship. I think it will become more and more important because the problems that we are facing today in Europe are, are joint problems and they're, they're social problems as well. Um, and and they, have, they are complex and they have really several dimensions. So they cannot really just be solved by, by people working uh, in individual ways. And I think it's, it's going to be about how we can use the tools of cooperatives and cooperative entrepreneurship to, to create some, some value in, in society rather than a traditional enterprise model which tends to extract value from, from society, right? So, so I see that it will be it will become more important and, and I think it will become even, even more crucial in the context of, of climate change and, and the climate crisis as well. That is a question that shouldn't need to be asked anymore. Because it is, it should be mainstreamed into what entrepreneurship is, having ideas, making them happen. We need to make those ideas cooperative and we need to make that concept of cooperativism, being cooperative, setting up cooperatives, part of mainstream startup culture. Because we need enterprises, ventures, community actions that are cooperative and that are creating positive social and economic change. And could you tell us more about how do you see the link between cooperative entrepreneurship on the one hand and entrepreneurial education on the other hand? Do you know the link between cooperative entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial education is, is really so close. Cooperative entrepreneurship is starting up, having ideas that have meaning, are bringing people together, are seeing people work together. Entrepreneurial education is just developing the mindset, the competences, the confidence, the experience to be able to work together with others, have ideas, make them happen. How is that different? Cooperative working should be an integral part of all entrepreneurial education. If we're talking about the formal education system or young people learning, we need to teach them to learn, to work together, to be together, to create together, to inspire together. So that, for me, makes it integral, makes it linked, makes it easy to link. I think one thing that needs to be emphasised is that we talk about cooperatives, we talk about social economy, and then we have business courses that don't talk about it. Why is that? We have economic models that aren't looking at those social economy models. Why is that? We need to change that. We need to make these business models, and they are business models, mainstream, part of the conversation, the normal narrative, the mainstream of this debate, of, this, of, of what people who are interested in starting a business learn about. So they're opened up to the opportunity of different business models um, that will create perhaps different impacts. And that's so important and that's got to happen and we need to work out how to make that happen on a very, very general, widespread basis across all countries. I think that uh, we are now, uh, let's say, uh, in this uh, recovering time, you know, entering a, a new period because we have seen all over the place in Europe and in the world that uh, young people, you know, wants to change the future. 
and they want to be involved. We have seen that, especially for the uh, uh, for uh, climate action. We have seen that you know uh, uh, projects that have been developed you know, in the sustainable development goal uh, concern. I think that the cooperative model brings really you know, an added value, you know, and can be you know, the solution for young people to create you know a business that will be impactful. So uh, important for them to know that. It's possible via this cooperative model. It's possible for them, you know, to have an impact, you know, on the uh, economic recovery. And uh, let's continue to uh, work, you know, with them, you know, to achieve results. What are your main uh, takeaways from uh, today and from the UCO project in general? Well, I think that uh, regarding takeaways, uh, I would say that uh, first of all, the, su the success, you know, the success of uh, of this project. Uh, we have seen that uh, really, you know, there is a need, you know, to uh, stimulate uh, and to develop, you know, uh, cooperative entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, this is already, you know, key. Uh, the second takeaway is about, you know, uh, awareness raising, you know, uh, is that the project will not stop today. I think that it's important, you know, to, uh, uh, to focus on the continuation of the project and to, to work with, uh, with partners, uh, with actors, uh, to continue to stimulate uh, cooperative entrepreneurship in, uh, in territories, uh, working with university, with secondary schools, with teachers, in order to, uh, to make this business model more visible, you know, uh, uh, for, uh, let's say, for, uh, for, 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 for Europe and for, uh, uh, for the territories. The event was really inspiring. It had some amazing spe uh, speakers and uh, it's really nice to see all the partners come together in person. Uh, for me, one of the biggest things is just the importance of how we can increase the, the collaboration between the different partners that are here today. Um, and also just how will we get the message out to, to, to people um, about the importance of, of cooperative entrepreneurship and really how we can mainstream that into, into a cooperative education. So uh, I think it's both uh, uh, how can we collaborate more uh, together internally, but also uh, outside of that as well. There's a lot of things that we that we take from this uh, from this project. It's a project that has been obviously very different from what we wrote, from what we expected to implement because this has been a purely COVID-19 project implemented uh, since March 2020. So at the beginning it was always like, well, maybe it's going to be two weeks, well, maybe it's going to be four weeks. At the end it's been at least 21 months since um, we started the project and this here in Brussels has been the first time that we've been able to see each other face to face, the, the partners. Uh, what I bring is, as always, new questions, new things that, that we have discovered, uh, new needs or new ways of approaching the needs that we already knew and new questions about, okay, how can we uh, contribute to this? What can we do next? That's always what we get from, from projects. And a lot of uh, very good colleagues, uh, a lot of potential. That's what we get. Questions about how to help, how to contribute now. And uh, the feeling, the sense that there's a lot of potential with our colleagues for, and with new colleagues that will come and, and other people that we still even don't know that we will join them and they will join us for, for moving forward. Well, personally, I, I learned a lot from all the partners and the person I have the opportunity to meet and to work with. So I, <clears throat> I think I developed a really holistic and more and deeper understanding of uh, learning applied to cooperative values and principles. So I think that all the partners were very complementary and uh, that uh, helped all all the team to grow a lot. Yes, yeah, so uh, we've worked for over 22 months very intensely on this project with 10 partners. I think what's the best that came out of this project is really um, what we produced for educators. Um, it's very user-friendly and action-oriented. I think if tomorrow an educator from secondary or higher education wanted to um, implement cooperative entrepreneurship principles in their teaching, they really would have an entry door. They really would have like a user manual. Um, what is interesting is that the guide for educators really gives you the why. Why should I be interested in this? Why should I care about this? Um, 
it kind of opens the, the, the whole work we've done to, to them. And then it guides them through all the other materials we've produced, which is much more pedagogical, action-oriented, even templates. Um, so these are all in the blended learning methodology, which presents the syllabi of the, the MOOC that we developed, but also of different workshop methodologies, which they can pick and choose. Uh, what is interesting in all of, of our products, so to say, is that we've got inspira inspira inspirating, uh, um, inspirational practices from across Europe, which can be um, re well reproduced, shared, and we also have tips and tricks to choose and pick and choose from. Um, and uh, lastly, I think one thing that for me, that I learned through the project is that Cooperative entrepreneurship uh, is in education is many things uh, and it can be whatever you want it to be and can be a mix of things and you can want to teach about cooperatives and that would be great because I think in many uh, business schools or entrepreneurship course we just still teach about a very traditional model of business. Uh, you can want to teach for cooperatives in that case like even pushing to create more cooperatives with, uh, with your students or for your students to create them afterwards. But then also you can teach through cooperatives and this can be done for any sort of subject, any course that you want to uh, implement. You can just use the principles of cooperative to make it more active and engaging for the students and, and the learners. So that, I think personally that was my main takeaway. <laughs>